Alright, I thought I'd do a quick actual video on my International L160. I've got a video up of it somewhere, but I think it's just starting it up. I didn't really do an overview. So this is my 1952 International L162. All original truck except the engine. It actually has an earlier engine in it out of a 40s truck. So this is a green diamond flathead 6 used on the K and KB series from the 40s. Original oil bath air filter. Still 6 volt positive ground. Um, I did do a slight modification to the truck and I put an electric fuel pump on it. Still 6 volt. And that's because the original fuel pump was leaking and a diaphragm is about twice the price of a whole electric fuel pump. And since this thing sits a lot, the electric pump is just easier on everything to be able to prime it up real fast. So, it's got a Carter ball and ball carburetor, external oil filter. I gotta change the coil, that was just to get it running. This radiator is out of a 84 Dodge pickup I used to have. When I got rid of the truck, I kept the radiator and cobbled it in here. Works excellent. Charging system works. Everything works. All the factory gauges. So that's under the hood. Try and get a shot of it. When I get out of here. The hoods on these trucks are really cool. They open either way, sideways, or you can latch the other side and open it the other way. Or pull both latches and it comes right off. So the L series of truck from 50, 49 or 50, 50 to 52 was the first series of international with the overhead valve six. Interior is all original, all complete. I'm not gonna fold the seat up because it's a pain. I think the bottom isn't really attached. But these seats are cool. This actually folds up this way, and then this one folds back, and they kind of sit on each other, and you can get behind the seat. Never cleaned the truck out since I got it, so it's got some uh, vintage Mountain Dew cans in here. But all original 6 volt gauges, they all work. It's got turn signals added on, and this would be your brake lights, as far as I know. I added the oil pressure gauge, mechanical Stuart Warner gauge. This truck is actually really well optioned. It's a five speed transmission. Usually they came with four speeds. And this is a two speed electric shift rear axle. Um, a lot of these were vacuum and they weren't all that reliable. So this has the electric rear end, so that ends up making it about a 10 speed. These other levers, this is the parking brake. This is for the hydraulic PTO off the transmission. So one of these engages the PTO and then the other one releases the hydraulic ram. Not sure if it would have originally had the radio. If it didn't have the radio, the delete plate's missing but dash hasn't been chopped up. Got some old farmer scratch marks in here. I always think that stuff is kind of interesting. Shows the history of what the truck has been through. And there's the tag to show how to work the two-speed electric shift rear end. Does it have a heater. I think that was another option that you would have had to check the box at the dealer to get that. So many wasps are in here. Here's the original coil. Does have sun visors. Split rear window. Someone may or may not have gotten shot in the head in here.
Here's the tag under here. Would have originally had the silver diamond engine, 240. So this is a 16,000 gross weight truck. Fuel tanks right there. Had to do a little patchwork on the bottom. Perfectly rust free, but it had a dent on the bottom there that split just ever so slightly to where it would keep leaking all my gas out. Bottom side of the truck's really nice. So this is a 160, I believe, two ton. So this has the extra frame reinforcement. You can see the frame. These grasshoppers stop trying to kill me. The frame is right here. This is an extra piece that's been riveted over top of the frame. And it goes from the front of the rear springs to somewhere up in here towards the front suspension. That gives it that extra weight capacity. Very heavy duty stuff. I believe it's an Eaton rear axle. Got an Omaha standard grain bed on it. Hydraulic dump does work. It's got some plywood over it. But the bottom side, you can see it's actually in pretty good shape. At the end here, it's rotted. So I'm going to have to do something about that at some point. But there's the aftermarket lights. These never got lights from the factory. As far as I know, these were pretty much only cabin chassis trucks from International. And then other companies would buy them and put their beds and stuff on them. Truck's been off the road since 90. Does have power brakes. Brakes do work. Something's leaking, but you keep adding fluid, they do work. Really no rust on this whole truck. This is definitely one of my favorites just because of how original and complete it is. But that's the International. Truck's been sitting for quite a while now. Got a nice overcast day today, so I think I may or may not end up trying to fire it up. So if I do decide to do that, I'll make a second video.